imagine a soldier. He joins the army, he goes to training, he swears an oath to protect the people, protect the border. But then the same people he swore to protect end up taking his life. How does that feel or how does that sound? This is the story I want to tell you today. It's about Captain Maxwell Adam Mahama. In May of 2017, Captain Maxwell was jogging and had his gun in his pocket. Normally when he jogs, he doesn't stop for any reason, but on that day, he stopped to respond to a woman asking him for directions. While he was speaking to the lady, she spotted a gun in his holster and immediately raised an alarm. Shortly, locals gathered and saw his gun and assumed that he was an armed thief and went to alert other times people. They wouldn't let him go. Now this is how jungle justice works in Africa. The moment people are surrounded, they won't let you go. They start beating you. You can't even speak because of the number of beatings you're getting from people from left and right. It's so hard for anyone to escape that. But those who do, they never want to get back to that position. Now the mob gathered around and pounced on him. He tried to explain that he's a soldier, but he did not have his badge or any form of ID on him. So they guessed he was lying. Meanwhile, the town had suffered a series of armed robberies recently, so they were always on the edge and on the lookout for anyone who fits the profile. They weren't taking chances, so seeing this young man with a gun on him at that early hours of the morning made them anxious. So they began to beat him, they used wooden plants to hit him, then they dropped large bricks on his head, his body was dragged to a ditch. In some of the videos, which I will not share here just for, because of YouTube's policy, you could see him dodging. You could see him trying to explain. You could see him covering his head. And you could see the mob angrily throwing stuff at him. They continued to beat him and then shortly, a woman crouched down to set him on fire. Gory videos of the killing filmed on smartphones flooded social media on that day along with tributes and calls for justice from influencers on social media and just about everyone who saw it the lynching was met with outrage and authorities acted quickly they dispatched the military to the town to find the perpetrators the following day, the first group of military troops stormed the village and punished the villagers. They gathered them up and made them do squats and other exercises. Now, when you hear squats, you might think, hmm, it's just an easy workout. But it's not so easy if your body is not used to it. Now, they made them squat for as long as they could and they flogged them and also made them do other painful exercises. They told them to slap each other. It was some form of retaliation since they couldn't just gun them down. Now, a number of the inhabitants fled to avoid getting punished by the soldiers. Now, this town was on fire. There was a lot of commotion. There was confusion. A, a soldier who was minding his business was just killed. The villagers did not even understand what they did wrong. It was after they had done it that they realized that they had just killed an innocent man. But now they cannot go back to the past. They have to move forward. Now, in the following days, there was some tension between the police and the military. The police came to the town to stop the military from harassing the people. But, you know, it, it's always going to be a clash because the soldiers are not going to take this lightly. One of their brothers have just been murdered by these people. So with the former protesting that the presence of soldiers caused people to flee, hampering investigation efforts, local media reported that schools have shut down as children have fled the town with their parents. It was so much. The young men who participated in the lynching fled. They were nowhere to be found. I mean, you would think that people who did something like this would stand their ground and try to fight back, but they, they ran away. You know, but this story stands out. First of all, this man was innocent. He wasn't a suspected criminal. He was in the army, a respected industry. He wasn't in uniform and they saw him armed and that was why they did it. It could have ended differently if he had been in the uniform. What if he fired his gun in the air? Perhaps he could have lived, but we don't know if the gun was loaded, you know. Now, days later, 
The Ghanaian police arrested seven suspects who were all identified through the smartphone videos of the killing. The police did a good job, they went through the internet, they went through the videos, they tried to get the faces of those who they could see in the video, they rounded them up and you know locked them up. Captain Mahama lives behind a wife and two children. He was in the region as part of a group of military sent to crack down on small-scale illegal miners known as Galamzi. Galamzi operations have a detrimental effect on the environment, using excavators and heavy-duty machines that pollute nearly water resources with industrial waste or oil. So this man was out here doing good, trying to protect the people, trying to save the land and this is how he was repaid by those same people. It's a very painful story each time I think about it. But that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button so that you can get more updates from me. I tell bizarre crime scenes, strange, mysterious stories like this. I also have more content on TikTok, short stories that I do not post on YouTube most times. So you can go there and check out what I have at Stories with Oluji. You can't miss it. Thank you again for watching and have a good day.